Okay, welcome back. We will continue our video series on medical terminology. In this video, we'll discuss chapter number 11, the urinary system. Learning objectives for this chapter, define and spell the word parts used to create terms for the urinary system, break down and define common medical terms used for symptoms, diseases, disorders, procedures, treatments, and devices associated with the system, build medical terms from the word parts associated with the urinary system, pronounce and spell common medical terms associated with the system. First, we'll go over some common word parts that you'll see for this chapter. The first one, albumino, is a reference to a protein. Blasto is a reference to a developing cell. Glomerulo is a reference to the glomerulus, which is a filtering unit within the kidney. Gluco is a reference to glucose or sugar. Same thing with glyco or glycoso. All those are a reference to a sugar. Miedo is a reference to a meatus or an opening. Nephro is a reference to the kidney. Pilo is a reference to the renal pelvis. Reno is a reference to the kidney. Uretero is a reference to the ureter. Urethro is a reference to the urethra. And uro or urino is a reference to urine. Alright, now we'll talk about some uh, basic anatomy and physiology of the system. The urinary system functions as the sanitation engineer of the body. It is there to help remove unwanted waste materials and also to recycle uh, needed materials. And the primary component of the urinary system are the kidneys, which will filter gallons of fluid from the bloodstream every day. Now, the system is re responsible for removing metabolic waste, toxins, excess ions, and water that will leave the body in the form of urine. The system also helps to regulate uh, blood pressure, the pH within body fluids, the concentrations of water and salt within the body, and also helps to regulate the production of red blood cells. In this illustration, we have the organs of the system. We have the two kidneys here, right kidney, left kidney. And then from there, you have the uh, ureters, trail from each. Go to the urinary bladder, then out the urethra. Here's more of the internal features of the kidney. And this large basin here would be the renal uh, pelvis, which is the most superior end of the uh, ureter. And this tube will lead on to the urinary bladder. And inside each of these uh, sections, these renal pyramids, you'll find a very large number of these units. This is one nephron. This is, this is the functional unit of the kidney, is a nephron. Each kidney has roughly one million nephrons. All right, now we'll talk about some uh, pathophysiology of the system. Now sometimes bacteria and viruses are able to gain entry into the internal organs uh, from the meatus through the opening in the uh, urethra. Now they're capable of spreading through the urinary tract, bringing uh, disease to the kidneys and then even beyond the kidneys. Now other sources of disease may afflict the urinary system, including tumors or, or stones or inherited disorders or cardiovascular disease. So the testing of a person's urine is a good convenient way to test someone's overall general health. All right, some terms that you'll see with uh, pathophysiology regarding the urinary system. Uh, urology, that'd be the study of the urinary tract. And someone who specializes in this field would be a urologist. And in regards to the internal medicine, this would primarily be a focus of renal medicine. And the study of the kidneys would be nephrology. And someone who specializes just in that field would be a nephrologist. All right, now we'll go over some uh, signs and symptoms in the word parts. We'll start with some prefixes. Uh, an means lacking or without. Dia means complete or through. Dis means painful or abnormal or difficult. And poly means many or more than one. All right, some common combining forms you'll see uh, with the system. Albumino is a reference to a protein. Azado is a reference to urea or nitrogen. Bacterio is a reference to bacteria. Glycoso is a reference to sugar. And hemo or hemato are both a reference to blood. Keto or ketono that is a reference to uh, ketones or acetones, which is a special type of chemical compound. Nocto is a reference to night. Oligo is a reference to few. Proteino is a reference to proteins. And then pio is a reference to pus. All right, some common suffixes you'll see regarding the system. Emia means of the blood. Uresis means urination. And urea means a condition of urine or urination. All right, now we'll go over some particular signs and symptoms of the urinary system. Uh, the first one, urinalysis. This is the analysis of urine, either by physical or chemical or microscopic means, usually to test for drugs or uh, disease. Albuminuria. This is the presence of having albumin or protein in the urine. Unuria, if you were to break down uh, this term. And means without. And urea means urination. 
So anuria means the failure of the kidneys to produce urine. So our next term, uh, azotemia. This is having a abnormally high level urea or other nitrogen containing compounds in the urine, such as uh, urea or creatinine. Bacteriuria, the presence of bacteria in the urine. Diuresis, this is an excessive amount of uh, urine being produced. Dysuria is a condition where you have painful urination. Glycosuria is a condition where, where there are high levels of sugar found in the urine. And hematuria is the presence of blood within the urine. Ketonuria is the presence of acetones or ketone bodies within the urine. Nocturia, this is a condition where the person feels the need to wake up and to urinate at night. Oliguria is the production of very small amounts of urine. And the opposite of that would be a polyuria, the production of an abnormally large volume of urine. And this will result in very dilute urine. Proteinuria, the presence of proteins in urine. And pyuria is the presence of pus within urine. This is most likely due to a bacterial infection. All right, now I'll talk about some diseases and disorders uh, in the word parts. We'll start with our prefixes. An means lacking or without. Dia means complete or through. Dis means painful. The prefix en, en, means in or within. Epi means above. Hypo means below. And poly means many. Some common combining forms. Albumino means protein. Azado means nitrogen or urea. Bacterio means bacteria. Blasto means a, a forming cell. Cysto means a cyst or a fluid-filled sac. And glomerulo is refers to the glomerulus, which is the filtering unit of the kidney. Hemato means blood. Hydro means water. Keto or ketono is a reference to ketones or acetones. Litho means stone. Nephro means kidney. Oligo means a few or a scant amount. Pio means pus. Pyolo means the renal pelvis. Reno means the kidney. Spediaso is a reference to uh, to tear or to cut. And steno is a reference to uh, constricting or narrowing. Uro is a reference to urine. Uretero is a reference to the ureters. And urethro is a reference to the urethra. Are some common suffixes that you'll see. Al means pertaining to. Seal means a hernia. Emia means of the blood. Ia means a condition. And Iasis is an abnormal condition. Ick means uh, pertaining to. Itis, the inflammation of. Megaly, the abnormal enlargement. Oma is a reference to a tumor. Osis means a abnormal condition. And pathy is a reference to a disease. Ptosis means a drooping or a sagging. Cis means the state of or a condition. And uresis means urination. All right, now I'll talk about some particular diseases and disorders of the system. The first one, AKI, acute kidney injury. This is a condition where there's a very sudden decrease in kidney function. And sometimes this is called acute renal failure. Cystitis, this is the inflammation of the urinary bladder. And if that inflammation spreads to the urethra, then it's classified as urethrocystitis. Uh, cystocele, this is a, a herniation of the urinary bladder into the vagina of a woman. And what happens here is the wall between, the, between a woman's vagina and the bladder becomes weakened. So the bladder actually will droop down into the vagina. And our last term here, uh, cystolith. This is having a, a stone within the urinary bladder. Our next term, ESKD, end-stage kidney disease. This is a condition where the kidneys are producing a very low amount of urine. And so this is a very, very important stage of chronic kidney disease. So the risk for congestive heart failure is much higher at this point. The risk for heart attack is much higher at this point. So this is a very dangerous stage uh, to be in. Because if this continues, then you'll end up with renal failure, which is the complete shutdown of the kidneys. Aneurysis, this is the involuntary urination. A good example of that would be a young child or wetting the bed. That would be an example of nocturnal urinurysis. Now, aneurysis will be different from nocturia, a term we mentioned earlier. Nocturia is the, the need to wake up and then go urinate at night. So you are aware that you have to go. But aneurysis is where you just go involuntarily without knowing. You wake up and you're covered in urine. And last term here, epispadius. This is a rare type of uh, malformation uh, of the penis where the urethra, instead of being on the very tip of the penis, where it normally is found, it is found on the, on the upper aspect of the penis. And this can be found in females also, where the urethra will develop too far forward or too far anteriorly. And this is how that would look for a male, is that the urethra being here at the tip is found on the upper aspect of the penis, or the dorsum. Our next term, glomerulonephropathy. This is a broad term that covers any anti-inflammatory disease of the kidneys. When you have inflammation involved with kidney disease, 
Then it's called glomerulonephritis. Hydronephrosis? This is the, the swelling of a kidney because of a buildup of urine. Here's an illustration of how that may look. On the left, the internal anatomy of a normal kidney. And the one on the right, one with uh, hydronephrosis. Normally, the urine that is collected in each of these pyramids will be deposited here in the renal pelvis. From here, it continues on to the ureter, onto the bladder. But with hydronephrosis, the drainage isn't working correctly, usually due to some kind of blockage, like a kidney stone. So fluid will build up more and more here in the renal pelvis. So that causes the pelvis to become distended, which will cause the organ to become distended. Hypospadias, the malformation of the penis where the urethral opening is on the uh, ventral side or the underside of the penis. So going back to this image here, the image we already talked about earlier, epispadius, the hypospadius is here. The opening is on the ventral side of the penis. Uh, incontinence, this is the lack of control of normal urinary function. So this is the unintentional loss of urine. An example of this would be uh, stress incontinence. This is where you have an unintentional loss of urine because of a, a physical activity or a physical movement. Coughing, sneezing, running, or lifting something very heavy. Sometimes a small amount of urine may come out of the bladder. That's not a normal time urine should be coming out, but that's a form of stress incontinence, the unintentional loss of urine. Nephritis, this is an inflammation of the kidney. Our next term, nephroblastoma, is also known as Wilms's tumor. And we're going to break down that term. Nephro means kidney. Blasto means the, a developing cell. Then oma is a tumor. This is a this is the most common type of uh, kidney cancer in children. It's where you have a malignant solid mass that forms in the kidney as it develops. And that's how that would look. You can see with this illustration, this area here would be a very large tumor, which would cause the, the overall organ itself to become larger and misshapen. Nephrolithiasis that is a condition of having kidney stones. And kidney stones are also known as renal calculi. Uh, this term, calculi, is a plural form of the word calculus. Calculus is not only a form of math, but in the anatomy, a calculus is another term for a stone. So calculi would be more than one stone. And that term applies for a stone in any part of the body, not just the kidneys. It doesn't matter if it's in doesn't matter if it's the gallbladder or the urinary bladder or the kidney. Any stone could be classified as a calculus. And a kidney stone would be a renal calculus. Uh, nephroma, that is a a tumor that arises from renal tissue, a tumor found in a kidney. All right, this illustration, we have an example of nephrolithiasis and some common places that kidney stones will uh, deposit themselves. They're commonly found here where the ureter meets the renal pelvis, uh, right near the femoral artery here, right at, right at the bladder, right inside the bladder. Nephromegaly is the abnormal enlargement of the kidneys. Uh, nephropathy is a general term that applies to any kidney disease. There are some examples that are listed here. Diabetic neuropathy, that is uh, damage caused to the kidneys because of having diabetes. The hypertensive, that is damage to the kidneys caused by hypertension or high blood pressure. And drug-induced, this is where you have damage to the kidneys caused by other types of drugs. Now, these drugs are usually uh, given to treat other conditions, such as uh, diabetes or cardiovascular disease. But as a side effect, they also may lead to damage of the kidneys. Nephroptosis is also known as a floating kidney. This is a condition that is more common in women than it is men. And in this condition, uh, the kidney will actually drop into the pelvis whenever that person stands up because the kidney is not that securely anchored in the peritoneal cavity. And this is a congenital defect. So next term, polycystic kidney disease, or PKD. This is a uh, genetic disorder where you have abnormal cysts that will develop inside the kidney. Now these cysts may vary in size, even though they're not malignant. The fact that you have a large growth within the kidney, and usually multiple cysts will develop, you're going to greatly impact how well that kidney functions. Pilitis is the inflammation of the renal pelvis, and something that's very, very related to that, pyelonephritis, is the inflammation of the renal pelvis because of a bacterial infection. So these terms are similar, but pyelitis is usually a reference to just the renal pelvis, but if you have inflammation of the pelvis and also the kidney, then it's classified as pyelonephritis. All right, in this image, we have real examples of kidneys that have polycystic kidney disease. You can easily see the large number of cysts that vary in size. Some are small, some are you know, quite large. So all these are cysts. These are water-filled sacs 
that will impact the kinase function. So next term, stricture. This is a abnormal narrowing of a bodily passage, especially a, a canal or a tube of some kind. And this can be caused by tumors or by inflammation or by scar tissue. Now, depending on where the narrowing occurs, it will be given a different, more specific name, which is what the next three terms are referenced to. The first one, ureteral stricture, is a stricture or a narrowing within the ureter. Urethral stricture is a narrowing of the urethra. Ureterovesical stricture. This is a stricture in the ureterovesical junction, which is the place where the ureter joins up with the urinary bladder. A stenosis is refers to a constriction or a narrowing of. Now this term will be you know, a synonym for a stricture, which is also a reference to a narrowing. But in general, stenosis is a reference to a blood vessel or a valve that is caused by uh, inflammatory diseases or infections. And strictures are caused by scar tissues. So an example of that would be ureterostenosis. This would be another term for a stricture of the ureter. Uh, uremia is having a elevated level of uh, urea within the blood. Ureteritis is an inflammation of the ureter. Ureterocele, this is a congenital uh, defect where the, the ureter actually will, will swell up and balloon right where it meets the bladder. So it will form a, a sac-like pouch, something that is more common in females than it is males. Ureterolithiasis is a condition of having stones within the ureter. A urinary retention, the inability to completely uh, empty out the bladder. And this can be a, a chronic condition or an acute condition. And our last term, UTI, urinary tract infection. This is any infection of the entire urinary tract. So either of the kidneys, the ureters, uh, urinary bladder, or the urethra. And most UTIs will occur in the lower part of the urinary tract, the urethra and the bladder. All right, now we'll talk about some uh, treatments, procedures, and devices. And there are word parts. We'll start with the prefixes. The first one, A. The first one, A, means without or lacking. Dia means complete or through. Some common combining forms. Uh, cysto is a reference to a cyst, a water-filled sac. Hemo or hemato means blood. Litho means stone. Miato means a meatus, which is an opening to an interior part of the body. And nephro is a reference to kidney. A peritoneo is a reference to the peritoneal cavity. A pilo is a reference to the renal pelvis. Reno is a reference to the kidney. Sano is a reference to sound. And tomo is a reference to cutting. Ureteral is a reference to the ureters. Urethro a reference to the urethra. Uro or urino is a reference to urine. And vesico is a reference to the urinary bladder. All right, now we'll talk about some suffixes. Uh, the first one, al, means pertaining to. Ectomy, the surgical removal of. Gram is a record or the actual test results. Uh, graphy is a process of recording. Logi is the study of. And lysis means the, uh, the breakdown or the destruction or the separation of. Meter means uh, to measure. Pexi means uh, to put in place or to fixate. Plasti, the surgical repair of. Arafi is a suture. And scopi is a visual examination. Stomi is the process of making a new opening. Tomi is the process of cutting. And tripsy means uh, to crush. All right, now we'll talk about some particular treatments and procedures and devices for the system. Your first one, BUN, blood urea nitrogen. This is a test that will measure the amount of urea nitrogen that's found in the blood. And basically, this is a test to show how well your kidneys and your liver are performing. Uh, creatinine, this is a waste product due to the normal breakdown of muscle tissue. And this is measured as a way to see how well your kidneys are functioning. Uh, cystectomy, this is the surgical removal of the urinary bladder or the surgical removal of a cyst. Cystography, this is a radiologic test that's used to uh, visualize the urinary bladder. And this is done to check for bladder cancers, polyps, hydronephrosis, or any other types of defects found in the bladder. And the result of that, that process would be a cystogram, the actual record of that examination. Related to that will be our next term, cystoureterography. This would be a radiologic test of not only the urinary bladder, but also of the ureters. They check for any, any obstructions, any blockages, malformations, any kind of uh, abnormalities. And the result that this test would produce would be a cystoureterogram. A similar test to those will be our next term, cystoureterography, which would be a visual examination of the urinary bladder plus the urethra. And the results that that would produce would be a cystoureterogram. Another type of 
a cystourethrogram. It's called a VCUG, voiding cystourethrogram. This is the visualizing of the bladder and urethra while the person is voiding, while the person is urinating. Uh, cystolithotomy. This is the process of cutting into the urinary bladder in order to remove a stone in the urinary bladder, or stones, plural. Cystoplasty, the surgical repair of the urinary bladder. And then whenever you have that, that will lead you to our next term here, cystography, which is putting sutures within the urinary bladder. Cystoscopy will be a visual examination of the, of the bladder. Cystostomy, this is the uh, surgical creation of a new opening into the urinary bladder. And to do so, you need to cut into the bladder, which would be cystotomy, the actual process of cutting into the urinary bladder. It's also known as vesicotomy. All right, in this illustration, we have an example of cystoscopy, a visual exam of the urinary bladder. And the way it's done is a cystoscope here would be inserted into the urethra. In this case, the end of the penis for the male. And then it, it would extend all the way into the, the bladder itself. And the end could also be used to remove stones or remove tumors or just used to visualize the inside of the bladder. So our next term, fulguration. This is a process that's used to remove malignant tumors or growths by using a, a high frequency current. And the heat from this high current will destroy these growths or these tumors. Uh, hemodialysis this is a medical procedure that's used to remove uh, waste products and fluid uh, from the blood and to correct any electrolyte imbalances. It's basically the same thing as having an, an artificial kidney. It's commonly used for people who have kidney failure at some level. So if their kidneys can't filter the material on their own, they need an external source to do it for them. This is how that would look. An example of uh, hemodialysis. So the patient's blood is taken out, put through filters, yeah. and then put back into the body. And any toxins, any waste products are removed before the blood is put back in the patient. Uh, lithotripsy is a process that's used to crush and destroy stones, such as uh, kidney stones. It was a very common example. An example of lithotripsy would be our next term, ESWL, extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. This is the, a procedure used to destroy uh, stones, like in the kidney or in the gallbladder, by using shockwaves, by using a, a pulse of sound. And as these stones are broken up into very small pieces, it's much easier for them to pass outside of the, the person's body. Here's an example of how that would look. ESWL. See the patient laying down here. Uh, this device here is projecting uh, sound waves up this way. And as those uh, shock waves basically break up and destroy any calculi that are found uh, in the kidney. And those much smaller, much finer particles are much easier to pass out uh, through the urinary tract. Nephrectomy, the surgical removal of a kidney. Nephography, this is a radiologic exam of the kidneys, so a diagnostic imaging uh, procedure of the kidneys, and the results that that exam would produce would be a nephrogram. Nephrology is a field of medicine that specializes in the study of the kidney, and the person who focuses on the specialty would be a nephrologist. Uh, nephrolysis, this is the, the breakdown or the destruction of uh, kidney tissue. Nephropexy, this is the surgical fixation of a kidney, usually a floating kidney, so it, it can't continue to move when a patient stands up. Nephroscopy is a visual exam of the kidney, and a tool you would use to do that would be a nephroscope. Nephrosonography, this is the process of uh, recording the kidneys by using sound. So basically this is an ultrasound of the kidney. Nephrostomy, this is the, the surgical creation of a new opening into the kidney. And a related procedure to that will be our next term, pilostomy. This will be the creation of an artificial artificial opening into the renal pelvis. So not just the kidney in general, but in the renal pelvis exactly. Uh, nephrotomography. This is a diagnostic tool to visualize the kidney by ejecting a contrast medium into the kidney. So this is a radiologic exam. The results that you would get from this process will be a nephrotomogram. The peritoneal dialysis. This is a treatment that's used for patients with severe chronic kidney disease. This is a type of dialysis where the lining of the abdominal cavity of the person is used to remove any extra fluid or any waste from the blood. And that compared to hemodialysis where the where we have a man-made filter that's used to filter out waste and extra fluid from the blood. Pilogram. This is a, an x-ray examination of the, of the urinary tract. Specifically, these are going to be radiographs of the renal pelvis and the ureter. Now an example of this would be an IVP, intravenous 
pilogram. This can show the all of the urinary tract, you know, the kidneys, uh, ureters, and the bladder. This is a, a good diagnostic tool to help visualize the entire tract all at once. Another example of this would be an RP, a retrograde pilogram. It's still a radiologic exam of the tract, but you're going backwards through the urinary tract. The dye is injected into the ureter. The contrast dye that's injected will flow up. So the dye is going in the opposite direction that urine normally would. That's why it's called retrograde. All right, there's an example of how this would look. This is a retrograde uh, pilogram. We have the contrast dye injected into the ureters. This and this long tube. In this type of image, you can see the renal sinuses here, the ureters, and the bladder. And because of the, the flow of this contrast medium is opposite of what urine would normally do, that's why it's classified as retrograde. Pylolithotomy. This is a procedure that's not that commonly done anymore thanks to shockwave therapy. But this refers to a process of cutting into the renal pelvis to remove a, a stone. So it's a lot easier and a lot, a lot safer to break up these calculi by using sound waves as opposed to cutting into an organ like this. You know, there's a lot more risk involved. It's a lot more invasive. It's just a lot easier just to use sound waves to break up the obstruction. Pyloplasty. This is the surgical repair of the renal pelvis and uh, renal transplant. This is the transplanting of a functioning kidney into a patient who is at the end stage renal disease. You cannot live without at least one functioning kidney. All right, this image, we have an example of a, a renal transplant. Now, when a kidney is transplanted into a recipient, it's not put into the same location that the diseased one was taken out, which is indicated here. The kidney that's transplanted into the the patient is actually put here in the pelvis. Renography. This is a visual examination of the kidney by injecting a contrast dye and the results that that would produce would be a renogram. And our last term here, SG, a specific gravity. This is a laboratory test that will that will measure the concentrations of all chemical particles that are found in the urine. And this is a test to to determine if the patient is hydrated or not. Ureterectomy, the surgical removal of a ureter. Ureterostomy is the creation of a new opening within the uh, ureter. And to do that, you need to cut into the ureter. And that process is called ureterotomy. Urethropexy is the surgical fixation of the urethra. This is done usually to help alleviate uh, incontinence. Urethroplasty, the surgical repair of the urethra. Urethostomy, the creation of an artificial opening into the urethra. And to do that, you need to be able to cut into the urethra. And that process would be urethotomy. Urinalysis, or UA, is the analysis of urine by using physical means, uh, chemical means, microscopic means. A catheter is a flexible tube that's inserted into a narrow opening into a body cavity, such as the urinary bladder. And the reason to do that is to remove uh, urine from the bladder. And when you have a catheter inserted into the bladder, it's called a urinary catheter. And the process of inserting the urinary catheter is urinary catheterization. Our next term, urinary endoscopy. This is a visual exam of the urinary bladder. And a tool that you would use to do this would be a meatoscope, which is a scope that would be inserted into the uh, urethra. If you wanted to exam uh, just the kidney, you'd use a nephroscope. If you wanted to look at just the urethra, you'd use a urethroscope. If you wanted to look at just the bladder, you'd use a cystoscope. So all four of these terms deal with visualizing a part of the urinary tract. This depends on what part of the tract you want to look at. Urology, the field of medicine that deals with study of the urinary tract. A specialist who focuses on that field of science would be a urologist. The last term here, vesicourethral suspension. This is a procedure that will help stabilize the position of the urinary bladder. Now we'll talk about some common abbreviations that you'll see of the urinary system. The first one, AKI, is acute kidney injury. BUN, blood urea nitrogen. CATH is the abbreviation for catheter. ESKD, end stage kidney disease. ESWL, extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy, HD, hemodialysis, IVP, intravenous pilogram, RP, retrograde pilogram, SG, specific gravity, UA, urinalysis, UTI, urinary tract infection, and VCUG, voiding cystourethrogram. All right, we'll end our chapter with our combining form quiz. Uh, terms on the left, nephro, cysto, Oligo, glycoso, and isado. They will match with either a few in number, sweet or sugar, 
urea, kidney, or bladder. Nephro goes to kidney. Cysto goes to bladder. Oligo goes to few in number. Glycoso, sweet, or sugar. Isado, urea. And here are all five of these terms correctly matched to their definition. That brings us to the end of chapter number 11. We will continue our video series on medical terminology with our next video on chapter number 12.